you know, thank God I had a good mom, you know, that uh, didn't give up on me. But here's one of those instances where I got myself into trouble. So I have this friend, his name is Brian, and we were bored on a hot summer day. So what do you guys do when they're bored on a hot summer day? Get into trouble. So here's what we did. We, we were like, uh, you know, let's go throw, uh, skip some stones into the pond across the street from my friend's house. And so we gathered a, a pile of uh, flat stones, but we're like, that's not going to be that fun. We need to gather bigger stones so we can go throw them at, at birds and snakes and maybe some cars. And so I realized, I'm like, Brian, your mom's got like a, a junky car. We could use that as target practice. And he's like, yeah, that's a great idea. And so Brian grabs, you know, this big stone and he, and he hauls off and he throws it and he misses by a mile. And Little did I know he missed by a mile because his mom was watching from the kitchen window. But I was like, hey, I can do better than that. So I picked up a big rock, threw it as hard as I could, and it went right through the driver's side window, and the window went into pieces, and literally so did his mom. She was so mad, she came out and was yelling at me, and here's the deal. Like, there isn't too many times, you know, growing up where I didn't get invited back to a friend's house, but that was definitely one of those moments. And I learned a very valuable lesson that hot summer day. Don't throw stones. It's a good one. So here's the deal. Hopefully all of you guys walked in with the stone. If you didn't, you're more than welcome to, to go back and to grab one. And what I want you guys to do is I want you to think about this. You see, stones, they can be valuable. They can be used to, to build up something. They could be used to, to cover something up. They could be used to decorate I want you guys to take a moment, and I want you to hold that stone in your hand. What do you feel? There's a hardness, right? There's a heaviness. There's a coarseness. There's maybe that feeling that you just want to throw that stone, right? If you guys could open back up to John chapter 8, let's kind of just walk through John chapter 8, uh, verses 1 through 11. We're kind of just going to walk through this story a little bit, but if you guys could have your Bibles open, uh, that would be awesome. You see, here in John chapter 8, Jesus had returned from the Mount of Olives, and the next morning he was back again at the temple, and he sat down and he was teaching to a crowd of people. And as he was speaking to these people, these religious leaders and these Pharisees, they brought this woman in to the front of the crowd. They brought this woman who was caught in adultery. And they asked Jesus, they said, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says that we must stone her. What do you say? And see, these guys, they were always trying to trap Jesus. They were always trying to get him to do something that they could use against him. But I love what Jesus does. He hears them, and then, and then he stoops down into the dirt and starts writing stuff in the dirt with his finger. And I wonder what he was writing. These guys, they, they kept demanding an answer from him. And so he stands up, and he says, all right, guys, well, how about this? Whoever, whichever one of you hasn't sinned, go ahead and throw the first stone. And then what does he do? He, he bends back down into the dirt, and he starts writing in the dirt again. When the accusers heard this, they all slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest until all that was left was Jesus in the middle of the crowd with this woman. And then Jesus, he, he stands back up and he asks this woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. You see, there is absolutely nothing wrong with calling sin exactly what it is. God hates sin. And God makes it clear that there is no place for sin in his presence. And as believers, we are called to hate sin. We are called to stand up against sinful behavior. However, it is important for us to remember that God hates the sin, but he loves the sinner. Jesus died to redeem lost people and to buy them back from the penalty and the punishment of sin. More important than our call to hate sin is our call to love sinners. But far too often, we forget this fundamental fact. We look at people, and we size them up, and we pass judgment on them, and we begin throwing stones. The sad truth is this. We are far more willing to point out the faults and the failures of others without realizing that we, too, are not without faults ourselves. 
as the Pharisees take this woman out before Jesus. You see, she is nothing more than a pawn and a plan to attack Jesus. But we can't forget that there was somebody else involved in this situation, right? You see, it takes two to tango. There was a man involved in this situation, and it doesn't make sense for the Pharisees to bring the woman, but not the man. Both of them were guilty. And one thing is clear about life. The behavior that comes from the flesh never makes sense. The stone throwing began when the Pharisees disregarded being just. The law that the Pharisees and these religious leaders were trying to uphold was discarded when they'd only brought the woman but not the man. You see, clearly there was no interest in justice. The stone throwing began before anyone picked up a rock. It began with the malicious intent to discredit Jesus no matter who got harmed in the process. The motive of these leaders was not to promote the things of God. They were promoting their own agendas and their own interest. You see, at first glance, most of us would come down pretty hard on the Pharisees, right? I mean, after all, what they were doing was despicable. But let me ask us this tonight. Are there times in our lives where we're not that much different than the Pharisees? We have all had times in our lives where we have pushed to try to get our own way. We've all had moments in our lives where we got angry or upset about insignificant things. We've all done things in our lives, uh, things that we desired, not what God desired. The truth of the matter is this. We are all guilty of sin. We all point fingers at other people. And we are all guilty of throwing stones. So why were these men, why, why were they so intent on destroying Jesus? I believe the root of the cause is this. It comes from an unforgiving heart, a heart that will neither let go of past pains or either endure current difficulties. You see, Jesus disturbed their way of life. He had challenged their preconceived ideas of religion. Jesus disturbed their power by appealing to the masses of people that the Pharisees had forgotten about. He disturbed their position by drawing large crowds of people to himself and to the disciples. And he disturbed their personal ideals that were not in line with the direction of the Father. There's a quote that says this. If we remember the wrongs which men have done us, we destroy the power of the remembrance of God. Why did these men want to throw stones? It's the same reason that we want to throw stones. We throw stones because we harbor hatred. We throw stones because we hold on to bitterness. We throw stones because we are entangled and anger. We throw stones because we want to have revenge. We throw stones because we can't let go of the things that have upset us. But Jesus said, if any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Can we really afford to throw stones? We all make mistakes. We all have sinned. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. And we all have a spiritual need for Jesus. You see, most of us would probably never actually think of throwing a stone at somebody unless you're my younger brother. When I was, you know, making fun of him, throwing stones with my words at him in the backyard, he threw one and hit me in the back of the head, and now I have a scar because of that. But here's the deal. None of us, none of us would really probably actually think about that. But far too often, we throw emotional and spiritual stones at people because of our hurtful comments by using generalizations, by gossiping about each other, by making judgmental statements, by being too harsh with the truth. So what are some other reasons that cause people to want to throw stones? One reason is frustration. When we become frustrated, it distorts our ability to see things clearly. Another reason is fatigue. Everything is always worse when we're tired, right? And then there's failure. When others fail us, we become quick to judge their actions. But when we fail others, we become quick to justify our actions. And then there's false assumptions. When we only get bits and pieces of the truth, we make assumptions about people based upon faulty logic. And then another reason is our feelings. When we choose to follow our feelings, I believe that we make the choice to become shallow. And here's the deal. The moment that we try to seek retribution, 
whether uh, things that, that were either real or imagined that we think have been done wrong to us, I believe that we lose a piece of our relationship with God. And when that happens, it becomes much easier to throw stones. We use the things that have happened to us in our lives as a way of justifying our actions. And in verse 10, Jesus says, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? And Jesus declared, Go now and leave your life of sin. You see, Jesus is the only one with the right and the reason to condemn this woman. And that's exactly what he does. Because Jesus will always condemn sin. But he always loves the sinner. He condemns sin because it destroys the lives of the people that he loves. You see, sin is in essence the corruption of God's creation. And as Christians, we are all called to love people like Jesus did. I read this great quote. It goes like this. We are supposed to recognize the corruption, but still love the creation. We are to recognize the corruption, but still love the creation. We are to love the person, but hate the sin. Romans 8.34 says this, Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died. More than that, who was raised to life and is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. You see, through Jesus Christ, we are set free from condemnation and from the punishment of sin. And I want to encourage all of us tonight to leave our lives of sin. What is it going on in your life right now that is keeping you from having a deeper relationship with Jesus? What sin is going on in your life right now that is keeping you from being closer to your Father? I need to be reminded of that in my own life. I'm constantly praying about that. Like, God, take this away from me so that I can be closer to you. Here's the deal. We'll never be completely free from the power of sin because sin brought death into this world. And I hate to break it to you guys, but we're all going to die someday. But we can be freed from the power and the bondage of sin. We can be free from the actions that our sin reveals within us. The actions of when we speak destructively about other people when we seek to create discord, or when we stir up division, or have disagreements, whatever those things that are, we can be freed from them. I also read this once, forgiveness flows from the life of Jesus. It is empowered by his sacrifice on the cross, and it is finalized by the triumph of the resurrection. So what stones are you holding on to tonight? Is it a stone of bitterness? A stone of anger? A stone of hatred, stone of prejudice. Whatever stone you are carrying tonight, let me tell you this. It is a needless weight that you bear. It is a pointless part of your life. The stone in your hand can be a means of letting go. So don't you think it's time now to take the opportunity to, to give those stones over to Jesus? This evening, if God has been speaking to you, I want to encourage you to listen to his voice tonight. And I want to encourage you to submit those stones to Jesus that you would use to destroy. Give them to Jesus so that he can use them to build up something beautiful. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for tonight. God, we thank you for the opportunity that we get to come and to, to dig deeper into your word and into your presence, God. God, I pray tonight, God, that we would leave our stones behind, God, that you're a big God. You can handle all of our sin. You can handle our brokenness. God, I don't know what it is that, that people are wrestling with tonight. I don't know what they're holding on to. But God, I pray that they would leave these stones behind tonight, God, as a sign of laying them down at the foot of the cross. God, as we come to the end of this Lenten season, God, I pray that we would continue to be focused on your cross, on your grace, and on your love, and on your mercy for each and every single one of us. God, help us as a church, help us as Christians to, to use our words to build others up, not to destroy others. God, help us be a good witness to others uh, of your love and your grace, God. We thank you for, for all that you do. We thank you for the sacrifice you made for each and every single one of us. We pray these things in your name.